Mars enters Leo, the Temple of the Sun, on Sunday, November 3rd. And until January 6th, we will assert ourselves in grand, noticeable, and solar ways. That is, of course, until Mars stations retrograde on December 6th. Let's dive in and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive readings. If you enjoy my content, enjoy my work, please take a few seconds to show your support by leaving a like, a comment, subscribing, and pressing that notification bell. Watch one more of my videos, watch five, watch 20. Anything helps uh, to help my channel grow, make my channel grow. You can also say thank you by buying me a tea, a coffee, a croissant. I really appreciate that as well. Before we dive in, if you're looking for personal guidance, you have questions, only a one-on-one -on -one consultation will answer. You want me to look at your chart, the degrees, the positions, help you understand that, help you figure out what 2025 has in store for you or how to make your relationship work better. Book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com to get that personal touch. On my website, you can also find a variety of products I create. My 2025 planner is a perfect tool to maximize your year to come. It contains 223 pages filled with insights, guides, journaling pages, new moon, full moon prompts, and so much more, including positive dates for love, challenging dates, and lucky dates. I created one in 2024, 2023, because I wanted to help myself get a planner that contains a lot of space to just sort of set my to-do list, but also astrological tips. And this would be, you know, and I am happy with it, so I'm sure you will be happy with it too. Find it on my website. Um, before we dive in, since we are talking about, about Mars and Leo, you can also pick up a candle, Sunlight in a Jar 3 is the candle that captures the sun in Leo. It is making a positive aspect to Jupiter. So this is great for starting new projects. It is beautiful, it's decorated with golden foil and can help anyone born with their natal sun in Libra or Aquarius, the signs of fall and detriment. If you struggle with getting recognition, if you are in a creative individual and sometimes you go through slumps and you feel like you could, you wanna be more inspired, this is definitely the perfect choice for that. Additionally, one of my more recent creations, look how beautiful these guys look together. This is like the same type of a jar. Um, there's also Moon in Cancer. They're all like sparkly and when you light them up, they, you can see the light coming through. Anyways, um, I'm like, look at my children. Here are the pictures of my children. But my more recent creation is Venus in Libra 3. This one was created on the night of September 14th, capturing the beautiful Venus Jupiter trine. If you remember September 14th, 15th being a beautiful weekend for you, it was my birthday. I was wearing this dress. <laughs> it was definitely a really, really great time for me. Um, but even if you don't remember it being awesome, highly recommend this candle. It captures the goddess of love in a harmonious aspect with the god of good luck and optimism. So it can help create good cheer, reach recognition, find love, manifest accord and good fortune. Perfect for any Libra rising, any Gemini rising, Aries rising. If your natal Venus is in Scorpio, Aries or Virgo, if it's retrograde or if it's placed in the dark house 6, 8 or 12, this is the candle for you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting me. Even if that just means leaving a like or sending a happy thought, all of that is once again, very much appreciated. So Mars is entering Leo on Sunday, November 3rd, right? Mars is the planet of action, desire, ambition, and conflict. When Mars travels through the Zodiac, he has his home signs of Aries and Scorpio. So when he's in Aries or in Scorpio, He's in his house, right? He's got all the tools and Aries. It's like gonna be a lot of like running gear and sharp maybe objects, battle axes, something that's like fast and does a lot of damage quickly. Uh, when it's in Scorpio, it's in the dungeon with its sort of like ninja, mysterious objects, dark magic, but it's still about like, it's still about like action, ambition, desire. So whenever Mars is not in Aries or Scorpio, it is in the home of the other planet, right? So 
When it's placed in Leo, it is in the home of the sun. So you can imagine Mars, the warrior, growing up in the home, in the sort of the royal palace, right? Palace. Like if it's hanging out with the sun, who is very confident and bold and noticeable and proud, and the sun is like encouraging Mars and telling him, you can do whatever you want, speak louder, be bolder, Mars gets impacted by it mars becomes a performer mars and leo people if this is you happy mars return but mars and leo people make really really good artists there are so many you know beyonce has it she's very much you know she's a virgo but when you need her to put on a show she's there she's a performer um donald trump has it he's definitely loud <laughs> michael jordan you know very much like the icon of basketball so like um if you're born with this placement this is who you are in general right you're you have this energy natally but for the rest of us when this transit is happening we tend to feel it and it's sort of um it's like getting a blood transfusion i guess for the time being it doesn't change who you are but it does infuse you with that like um desire to be in charge desire to be like proud look at me puffing my chest but that's literally like you want to be seen you want to be seen as the best version of yourself leo is noble so we will seek noble goals noble missions we will try to be generous we will sort of express ourselves like i said once again very like proudly and boldly so mars doesn't exit leo right it kind of gets in um i'm gonna tell you how far does it go but it doesn't go it doesn't go very very far it makes it um hold on i am pulling it up Mars goes retrograde on December 6th. So it gets as far as six degrees Leo. So if you have, you know, if you have planets between zero and six degrees Leo, Mars will activate them, but it's not gonna make it too, too far because it goes retrograde on December 6th. So it enters on November 3rd, moves very, very slowly. This is like the slowest Mars is ever moving. Normally Mars takes about two months um, a little less to go through the zodiac sign and it's done it's on to better things right here mars stays until like i said it only makes six degrees in a whole month which is so slow normally it's like 30 degrees in two months so 15 degrees in a month right and now it's only six um so it makes it to six degrees stations retrograde on december 6 and travels backwards so we may notice that until december 6 between November 3rd, December 6th, we maybe have a lot more of those like big goals. We express ourselves creatively. We are not afraid to be on stage. We're not afraid to speak in public. Of course, a lot depends on the rest of your chart. That's why I always recommend looking at your natal chart and getting a reading. But for the most part, you will feel like less afraid of visibility. And you will enjoy surrounding yourself with people you will enjoy boosting other people's confidence and like cheering them on etc um but then december 6 comes mars stations retrograde and you may start to doubt the things that you have accomplished you may start to wonder was it necessary to buy 15 goats <laughs> but mean you're just you know you're just sort of feeling less certain you're you're your direction your sort of clear purpose gets tainted somehow and you need to back up you need to rethink you need to like revisit certain things mars in leo might also bring up conflicts with uh people in power might bring competition around fame and recognition where you are seeking the spotlight but so do people around you and so mars going retrograde might encourage you to address some of those some of those you know difficult emotions but until december 6 we definitely can benefit from being more confident being more proud being more charismatic being better at putting on a show public speaking um venturing creating content all of that stuff is really great and then the retrograde from december 6 until january 6 when mars is in leon 
from January 6th until February 23rd, it will be retrograding in Cancer. But that period, December 6th, January 6th, 2025, we are um, maybe rethinking the creative content we made, rethinking the choices we made, feeling a little less inspired. Maybe we're asking what is it that is our best quality? What is it that we can offer to the world? What's interesting is Mars will oppose Pluto three times. So the first opposition happens while in Cancer early in the day on November 3rd. Then it opposes it again in Leo while retrograde on January 3rd. And then for one last time after it enters Leo in April, it will oppose it on April 26th. And so we're having to deal with our ego, our drive and our motivation and our desires, our most basic instincts being opposed by the force outside of ourselves. And speaking of, you know, this transit in Leo, we're going to get to it. We're going to talk about it when we get to it. But the first one does happen right around the time Mars ingresses into Leo. But it is also the one that happens on November 3rd. It is the very last time Mars and Cancer will oppose Pluto in our lifetimes because Pluto is gone. Not going to be back until 2200. So uh, not going to be back in Capricorn, basically. But pay attention to what happens in late October, October 29th, 30th, 31st, um, November, like, you know, definitely the first maybe week of November. Pay attention to power struggles that come up. Pay attention to your desires. Watch out for pushing extra hard. Watch out for taking things too far because this is the first opportunity to realize where are you being too controlling, too aggressive, too forceful. Like, you know, where do you need to take a step back and retreat and figure things out? And then that opposition again on January 3rd will be a lot more about like ego versus community versus like this one on November 3rd I feel like it's a little bit more about like personal emotional versus structures and rules and regulations and maybe questions of like where do you need to let personal be more important versus where do you need to focus on your boundaries and how can you create a better balance between those but then the opposition between the opposition on January 3rd between Mars and Leo and Pluto and Aquarius, that is definitely a lot more about like, and this, this might, we might start to feel it the entire transit from December 3rd until January 6th, 2025. Um, it's like Mars and Leo, me, look at me, I, hi, here I am versus Pluto and Aquarius and the world changing around us, the community becoming more important, the, you know, the sort of rules that need to happen around all of us and how important it is to have a safe and healthy community. So a lot of important questions, I think, will be coming up during this Mars in Leo cycle and the retrograde as well. And of course, the fact that we are in the States, we are right, you know, so close to the election all of that feels very, very important, especially with this energy of like the shadow side of Mars and Leo can definitely be entitlement and being too like self self absorbed. So so we'll we'll have to deal with shadows of that. We'll definitely have to deal with shadows internally and also deal with shadows of power and people in the world that have power. Long story short, just watch out for power struggles, watch out for pushing yourself too hard and uh, being too uncompromising, too stubborn, like it's a fixed sign, it's a fixed energy, it's, you know, once it sets its sights on something, it's hard to, uh, it's not gonna bulge so you gotta be try to practice flexibility so let's take a look at the 12 rising signs before we do that if you're looking for personal guidance you have questions about the year ahead your relationship or your natal chart book a reading at anastasiadoesastrology.com i'd be happy to answer any questions you have you can also find my beautiful creations like my 2025 planner on there and this beautiful venus and libra 3 candle look at it I love all about it. 
everything about it. This is actually the bracelet I'm wearing is also a bracelet I created while I was making candles because I'm now branching out into bracelet creation. Okay, so starting with Aries rising, Mars is entering your fifth house and that represents the time when you are more creative, you feel more inspired to pursue pleasurable activities that might involve seeing friends, that might involve going dancing, that might involve making art, you're more driven to date and you have a higher libido. And you're very much motivated by the desire to enjoy life to the fullest, right? So the action that you're taking might be, might be directed towards reaching that um, visibility, recognition, finding the perfect partner, hanging out with children, making children. Fifth house is a very fertile place, but you gotta watch out for like, uh, being too uncompromising, especially as Mars opposes Pluto in the 11th house later in this cycle. You may have to deal with realizations uh, surrounding friendships, like where your goals are at odds with other people's goals, um, where your habits are actually unhealthy. So just be mindful that you don't take yourself too far on that search, on that quest for pleasure. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are the lovely Taurus rising, Mars is entering your fourth house. So it's going to energize you to renovate your home, to remodel your home, to make, make some kind of positive changes. You're maybe with Mars being in Leo, you're maybe seeking um, to add some lights to it, to make it more bright, especially if you're like a content creator from home or you, uh, you know, film yourself at home for whatever reason you might notice that you're like craving more action in the home and maybe creating a spotlight for yourself in the home. That might translate in being more active with family too and kind of showing up as this like um, architect of the family fun. You're the one who organizes people, you come together, you're like um, throwing get togethers, right? You might be more protective of your family, you might also fight with your family a little bit more and you're more likely to have to face some challenges involving balance between your home family and your professional life. So having to figure out some dynamics, deal with bosses that are maybe too controlling and you know, take you away from home, take you away from family, trying to create a better balance in life is very much um, are all symptoms of this transit. Please share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are a Gemini rising, Mars is entering your third house. I quite like this. I like this, especially from November 3rd until December 6th. You have the energy, you have the courage, you are driven to speak, film content, write, speak up for your community, for your neighbors. You are like this, you're like this, like regal knight arriving into the poor village. And you're like, how can I help you? So that can translate in more inspiration. They, that can translate in more activity in the neighborhood, hanging out with people, meeting people. Like I said, speaking, writing, great for content creation, great for business, great for networking. Your schedule is packed, so watch out for, just make sure that you're not like overextending yourself because when Mars goes retrograde on December 6th, you're likely to notice that it, some of the action you've taken needs to be revisited. Some of the projects you've started maybe need additional attention. You may also be dealing with like ideological disagreements as Mars closes in on an opposition with Pluto. Mars, and you know, Mars is hanging out within like six degrees off Pluto the whole time, basically. So it's like those questions of like your goals, your self-expression, your speech versus like the logistics, right? Your desires versus what the... YouTube guidelines are, <laughs> or your projects versus educational requirements you need to fulfill. Um, there might be some kind of ideological debates, disagreements within the family involving the election, politics, religion, etc. So be mindful of that. Beware of getting in these fights that are impossible to win, watch out for driving too fast and watch out for overextending yourself. And if you're looking for more, please book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. 
Highly recommend for you guys my Venus and Libra three candle too. It falls in your fifth house of romance, pleasure, joy. It could be a great fit for the upcoming retrograde and all the chaotic energy. If you are the lovely Cancer rising, Mars is entering your second house and it will be opposing Pluto in your eighth. So Mars in the second house energizes you to make money. It energizes you to take action to competitively make money you might notice that you feel more drive to reach out to people to uh, sell your products to go to fairs to uh, um, take some kind of proactive approach to uh, improving your financial situation right and mars and leo actually has the charisma necessary to get people to support whatever mars and leo desires you may run into some challenges involving spending money. Mars and Leo might also reflect that you are more willing to just throw money at the problem. So you gotta be careful that you're not, and like Leo is also a very generous energy. So watch out that you're not just like overspending and being extra generous and trying to do things to keep other people happy. And since Mars is opposing Pluto in the eighth, you may have to deal with some tension um, involving other people's views on how you spend money or other people's views on what you're making. You may have to run into, you may run into some kind of power struggles with banks or financial institutions, people who you somehow rely on financially or people that rely on you. It might also be the time when you're dealing with disagreements involving your support of other people. Like you feel like, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's enough maybe it's time to dial it down but other people are disagreeing with you mars goes retrograde on december 6 and until january 6 it will be moving backwards through your second house which might suggest that some money that you made or some financial strategies that you figured out will need to be pulled back so in terms of money there might be a sudden spending so definitely be careful around this time making really big purchases. I would advise that you uh, stay careful with how much you spend and how quickly you spend because the retrograde might suggest some type of um, reversal there. Please share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. I'll be happy to talk about your natal chart, your year coming up, your relationship, and more. You can also pick up my beautiful Moon in Cancer 2 candle or almond moon. This is perfect for Cancer rising, Risings because it captures the moon in your sign. Very soothing, very relaxing, great at manifesting. Um, perfect accompaniment for any new moon rituals as well. Anastasia does astrology.com. If you are a Leo rising, Mars is entering your first house. And after Mars being in Cancer for a couple of months from September 3rd until September 4th until November 3rd, um, and Mars and Cancer opposing Pluto in the sixth house, you may have dealt with some power struggles involving work. You may be realized your need for better like practices around mental health, better care for yourself. So now that Mars enters your first house, you feel more energy. You feel more courage. You feel more drive, more motivation. So this is a great time to exercise. It's a great time to start anything new, especially when Mars is direct between November 3rd and December 6th. Just a second. Mars will go retrograde between December 6th and February 23rd, and the part until January 6th will be in Leo, which does suggest that some of the things you start, let's say we're talking about a physical exercise program, when Mars goes retrograde, you realize like, oh, hey, this doesn't quite work for me, or this weight is too little, or this weight is too much, or I tweaked my back. So you want to be really like you want to take advantage of this energy and start projects, especially if it's like projects that require visibility or physical activity or independence, courage, starting a business, etc. But you want to make sure that you're being a bit careful. Don't overextend yourself. Don't push yourself too hard. And then Mars will also oppose Pluto in the seventh. Um, most of this period from november 3rd until january 6th and that is suggesting that there might be some tensions between your 
initiative and your drive and ambition and desire and your partner's. So watch out for power struggles in relationships. Try to be honest and direct and address any disagreements in a straightforward way. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. I'm happy to talk about your year coming up, your natal chart, or your relationship. You can also pick up my 2025 Astrology Planner. It is really pretty, and it is full of information that can make your year easier. If you are a Virgo rising, Mars is entering your 12th house, energizing you to work alone. You might notice that you're kind of proactive and productive, but more in the privacy of your home or your office. You're also driven to retreat, and that might come across um, as traveling and getting away and going to a, a faraway place, potentially. Uh, Mars in the 12th can energize you to heal and to seek a therapy, a therapist's help, right? Seek help from a therapist. Um, it might also energize you to pick up some kind of spiritual practice, start doing yoga, do um, some kind of martial arts as well. You may feel, you know, besides the possibility of getting away, going away, you may also feel like your dreams are more colorful and you're getting away through your dreams or you're getting away through um, what your intuition is telling you. Sometimes Mars in the 12th house may represent trouble sleeping. So do your best to exercise, go outside and like, you know, um, make sure that you're taking care and not just of your physical health, but your mental health. Mars will be opposing Pluto in your sixth house. Most of this time they are within sort of um, pretty close, close orb from one another, which might suggest that there is a bit of tension between that desire you have to retreat and work on creative spiritual projects and your actual workload and maybe the control your boss is trying to apply to you. So you may need to address some kind of tensions involving work and try to create better balance in your life. And of course, when Mars goes retrograde on December 6th, um, it will be retrograding in Leo until January 6th. There might be certain revisions you need to make to those spiritual projects and maybe revisions to how you take care of yourself, releasing some bad habits, introducing healthier ones. Please share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. You can also pick up my 2025 Astrology Planner to make your year easier, happier, and more successful. If you are the lovely Libra rising, Mars is entering your 11th house and it will energize you to connect with other people, to network, to create social media content. You might find yourself fighting with friends a little bit more, fighting on social media a little bit more. On the positive, you know, this could reflect you fighting for something, like you're fighting for the rights of a group. You're finding like fight, fighting for rights of women or children with Mars opposite Pluto in the fifth house, um, fighting for the beliefs of someone, you know, like asserting yourself, taking action towards reaching your dreams. Of course, when Mars goes retrograde on December 6th and it stays retrograde in Leo until January 6th, you may realize that some of the projects you have taken on, some of the friendships, some of the group initiatives that you have started may need to be redone, right? This might be the time when you're like losing kind of inspiration, feeling uncertain, some of the friends, some of the associates fall out and don't wanna do things anymore. Um, there might be more sort of tensions with friends that you need to address. And of course the advice is always be direct, watch out for overloading yourself with social plans. Um, Try to be mindful of what you're fighting for because with this transit, you might engage in uh, common battles and that's not always healthy for you to tr So try to like maintain peace <laughs> as much as you can. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. I'd be happy to look at your natal chart year coming up and more. And of course, my beautiful 2025 planner is available for purchase. You can find it at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com as well. Pick one up, get one for a friend, your mom, your loved ones. It is a great tool for the year to come. And I, you know, I poured so much love into it. 
If you are a Scorpio rising, Mars is entering your 10th house and here it's energizing you to take professional action. Your ambition increases, your desire for visibility increases, you're maybe going to more professional events, you're maybe taking on more work, you're maybe telling bosses that you're ready for a raise. Of course, Mars will be retrograde from December 6th until January 6th, and that might suggest that if you've been too like ambitious, overly ambitious, you will need to dial it back. You may notice that your current work situation is not as satisfying as it might be. So dealing with some kind of um, rethinking Mars retrogrades back into your ninth house, maybe realizing that you need to study or you need to move for a better professional, um, for better professional opportunities. So be ready, be ready that this action that you take professionally between November 3rd and December 6th will need to be like retraced. So I would advise that you do not like make really reckless, rash professional decisions, but keep working at things that you have started earlier. And Mars will also be opposing Pluto for a while um, between your 10th and 4th houses, which might suggest power struggles with family members affecting your work. Um, I know a Scorpio rising who works for the family members, so that is very, <laughs> that seems very appropriate. Um, maybe some kind of tensions involving your home, your living situation that are also affecting your work life and just an overall need to create more balance between home and work as much as you can. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. You can get a natal chart relationship predictive reading. And I also highly recommend my Mars Kazemi candle because this is perfect for counteracting the effects of the retrograde. And Mars Kazemi is Mars in Scorpio conjunct the sun. So it has that strong Mars in rulership helping you tackle whatever life throws at you. If you are a Sagittarius rising, Mars is entering your ninth house, energizing you to study, to teach, to grow. The main word is grow and expand. And Mars in, in your ninth house could be growing through taking yoga classes, through um, studying for an exam, through becoming a teacher, through going on a trip. Mars in the ninth could be very much like I am ready to relocate. I am ready to move. I am ready to venture out into the unknown. Um, there might be new writing projects, new legal battles that you're engaging in. So, you know, watch out for, just keep in mind that the period from November 3rd until December 6th is a shadow period of Mars. So the themes that appear right now, you will have to revisit from December 6th until January 6th when Mars is retrograde. So it might suggest that, you know, you're like, okay, I'm going back to school, let me submit the documents. And then Mars is retrograde and you have to redo something. Or you schedule an exam, it gets postponed. Um, or you start a legal matter, or you start applying for a visa and there are some kind of delays that are represented by Mars retrograde. So take action, but be ready to address problems and watch out for ideological debates. As Mars opposes Pluto in your third house, you may notice kind of conversations that have very intense charge, maybe battles around politics, religion, philosophy, life styles. Um, and I would advise that you try to stay above that to avoid the most you know, frustrating manifestation of it. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Pick up a planner, pick up a candle. Um, Venus and Libra is a really lovely choice for you and I can describe how beautiful this color of pink is. I feel like it's, it's hard to express on camera. <laughs> if you are a Capricorn rising, Mars is entering your eighth house. Mars in the eighth is a burst of energy especially between when it's direct, between November 3rd and December 6th, involving spiritual pursuits. With Mars in the 6th, you may be learning Reiki, learning um, yoga, meditation, spiritual sort of things. You may be learning how to transform people's lives. You know, like Mars in the 8th could be a desire to help people going through crisis, 
uh, transforming your own life. Mars in the eighth could also be the time when you're actively partnering up with other people, reaching out to others and signing contracts or negotiating agreements. All of that will have to be rethought when Mars is retrograde in Leo between December 6th and January 6th. Um, you may need to renegotiate, right? Like Mars in the 8th could also be like, oh, me and my partner opened a joint bank account or me and my partner decided to get a dog and then Mars is retrograde and you're like, yeah, but we didn't realize that my partner is leaving for six months and now I'm the sole owner of the dog. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna handle this, right? Um, so Mars retrograding between December 6th and January 6th while it's still in Leo might represent, ha represent having to negotiate some things, having to redo some of the work, having to revisit some of the agreements. Ultimately, I think you'll be asking whether things are fair in relationships, in professional agreements, in finances and the way you share money with other people. Mars will be opposing Pluto. Um, pretty tightly for a while because it's so slow right but especially in late december january and you may have to address some power struggles around money some disagreements around values too especially if you're in a relationship but even if you're not it could be about your relationship with your bank or your relationship with your business partner or your relationship with your uh employer right there will be a lot of this like need to rebalance things Please share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. For the beautiful Aquarius rising, Mars is entering your seventh house. And between November 3rd and December 6th, while it's direct, you may notice a desire to date. You're becoming more proactive. You're putting yourself out there. If you're in a relationship, you're maybe going out more with your significant other. You're maybe talking about commitment. You're, you're driven to partner up. It could also be connected to business partnerships. There might also be a danger of fighting more with your partner, especially when it comes to like ego battles. I want this. I deserve that. Um, when Mars is retrograde from December 6th until January 6th in Lyon, you will need to rethink some of the relationship matters, right? There might be some conflicts that are coming back from the past that you thought you've laid to rest, but something still needs to be said. Um, there might be some power struggles with Mars opposing Pluto in the first. Some, like, a need to re, like, a need to talk about how your personal plans align with the plans of the relationship or your partner's vision of your life because sometimes you might discover something that like your partner wants you to be a stay-at-home wife and you're like have no intention of doing that or stay-at-home parent um the retrograde of mars in the seventh from december 6th until january 6th can bring an ex back into your life or a, an old business partner as well some kind of old professional connection too if you're looking for more guidance book a reading at anastasiadoesastrology.com i'd be happy to talk about your natal chart your year coming up or your romantic compatibility you can also pick up my 2025 planner it's pretty it's useful it's magical <laughs> if you are the lovely pisces rising mars is entering your sixth house so it's direct until January, December 6th, and then it's retrograde from December 6th until January 6th, right? So the direct phase gives you energy to take care of your health, make doctor's appointments, exercise. You're committing to some kind of hard, like hard and difficult project with Mars here. Mars is in its joy in the sixth house. So whatever life throws at you, you can handle it. And you do so with a flair, right? Like you do so with the charm, charisma, um jokes uh, flying around etc when mars goes retrograde between december 6th and january 6th you may run into some kind of troubles like let's say at work or you're dealing with like a legal situation there's a glitch in the process you may struggle with motivation right like mars is direct between november 3rd december 6th and you're like i am working out five times a week i got this my health is in my control and then mars goes retrograde and you're like uh maybe twice a week maybe sometimes five times a week so you may struggle like getting yourself motivated 
Um, you may have to address some mental health issues that are blocking you from like handling, taking care of your body, handling your health better. You may run into some kind of old health issue, like Mars retrograding in the sixth house can bring back some type of like, you know, um, maybe health situation that you've thought you've kicked to the curb or like a bad habit that you thought you addressed that you need to revisit. Still a relatively decent placement, I think, because Mars is still in his joy in the sixth house, but doesn't come without any problems. You may also have to deal with some kind of power struggles, conflicts with your colleagues, because sixth house represents colleagues and pets. If you have any pets, <laughs> your pet might be plotting against you. I'm joking, but there might be some matters involving pets that you have to address or some type of like um, work tensions, watch out for like rushing at work or trying to do things too fast because sometimes mars retrograding in the six might be like symbolic of a workplace injury which will not happen for most of you i promise but like just beware and like especially that period from december 6 until january 6 with mars retrograde in your sixth house it will do you more good to move slowly and to be kind of conscious about things Thank you for watching. If you're looking for more book or reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com, pick up my 2025 Astrology Planner, Moon and Cancer 2 candle. It could be very supportive during this chaotic time. And I will talk to you very soon. I hope you enjoy the at least the initial part of this Mars and Leo transit, the energy of action, courage, boldness, drama, charisma. Um, so have fun. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.